Hi, I'm Adam from Adam Does Movies. I'm also a certified Rotten Tomatoes critic, but who cares? It's all kind of pointless and useless anyways, isn't it? Maybe it always has been, and I'm now just coming to that realization. Or maybe there's something else at play. Let's time capsule this video. The year is 2023. Objectivity, subjectivity have blended into the same thing now. Fandoms are all over the place. You can't say fandom without saying dumb. And there are so many sequels, massive giant universes, and everything that's not original coming out anymore, that at the point that once we start getting into the 7th, 8th, and ninth movie, why do I even need to give these people an idea of what to expect? They should probably already know that. Oh, there isn't seven car chases in this one. There's only five. You might want to skip it. Oh, this live action remake didn't have all the songs from the original. Probably should avoid it. Like, these are the kind of crappy things you have to say now. Give me a break. Today's video is brought to you by all the pathetic, butthurt little wimps on the internet that can't take film criticism. That look at it like it's some sort of personal attack. Or they start to throw insults out because they can't handle the truth. And the truth of the matter is this, you probably like movies that aren't good. I know I do, and I can admit it. The difference is there's people so hung up on these franchises, on the studios making them, that they just seem to think that they have to go to war over a person's opinion or attack them for every different little thing they can think of. This guy's white. He probably shouldn't have anything to say about this film. This guy's at least 40. Why is he talking about kids' movies? Well, who do you think's talking about them on Rotten Tomatoes? Who do you think's reviewing these things? Do you think they have a six-year-old girl talking about The Little Mermaid and giving her review? Probably would be more appropriate considering the movie's trash and it's probably only for seven-year-old girls. Regardless, the point of movie criticism is to look at the movie objectively as far as you can and subjectively separately, giving your take on the movie from a production standpoint and from a personal standpoint. It's good to separate them so people know where you're coming from, but I think it's also pointless to not have both things in play. So for instance, we take something like The Little Mermaid, live action 2023. We know Disney's remaking all their classics because those movies are really popular and they make a ton of money. A lot of money is being made by these live action movies. Whether Little Mermaid follows the trend remains to be seen, but the last few made a billion or just shy of a billion. So people going to war for these movies will look at those numbers and say, you're wrong. It made a ton of money. That means people loved it and went out to see it because money equals quality. So it should be at 100% on Rotten Tomatoes or it should be a 10 out of 10 on this site or this aggregate. That is not how things work. I'm sorry, it's not. Popular games, movies, books, toys, that doesn't equal greatness. I know this because the Fifty Shades of Grey and Twilight books exist. And they're massively popular. And they're trash. So then we have to go to beauty is in the eye of the beholder, right? When you have these big tentpole properties coming out every year or every couple years, the live action remakes from Disney, they all look the same, right? They all have these weird little twists to the originals, but not enough to separate them. We're talking like 4% changes in these films. So for the most part, you're watching the same movie again. They look muddy. The acting is very stilted. It's, it's kind of bland all around. Most of the performances are walking through their shit. They're not really trying, it doesn't seem like, or they don't have the direction they need because they're staying in front of a green screen the whole time. Yet, they make a ton of money and there's a loyal fan base that will go see all of these because they love the old ones. They want that nostalgia. They want that hit of dopamine again. So how do you say, how, how do you review to them, right? How do you come up with a review to them? Hey, I don't like what they're doing with these movies. Keep in mind, I don't give a fuck about the gender swapping or the race baiting or whatever's going on there. 
I don't, it, it's so obvious on the nose that it's like eye rolling to even get upset about it. It's like, okay, they're doing it because then they can drum up controversy or they can pretend that they're, you know, they're being progressive and pulling this audience and get people feuding. It, it, who cares? It's so boring. It's so pedestrian. I have the originals. I would prefer if they did more changes, not less. Swap out everything. Do something original with that property. That would be amazing. How about make a Little Mermaid film that doesn't follow Ariel, but it follows a new character? There's like seven of these sisters, right? Follow a different one. Tell a different tale. You can still call it the Little Mermaid even. But give me something to enjoy here. Don't just let me go, oh, remember this? There's Under the Sea, there's that. I've already heard this. I have the movie. I have, I have the movie 20 years or whatever. And this isn't just a live action Disney rant. This is about all of these movies. Fast and the Furious 10 is out. Fast and the Furious 10. I thought these movies were dumb from the beginning. Even Fast and the Furious. I was like, ugh, this isn't for me. And that's where we really get to it. This isn't for me. So then you look at it from the other angle, right? Who is it for? Well, it's for guys that like fast cars, fast women, cool macho dudes. Okay? their words. If film criticism was based on that criteria, hot women, hot cars, cool muscle dudes, then yeah, A plus, there you go. But we're looking at the production. We're looking at the music. We're looking at the setting. We're looking at the acting. Is the story creative? Does it have a compelling narrative? How does it work out? And so then when we get to Fast 10, it's like, oh God, I don't even know what to say. This is a video game. It doesn't make any sense. The characters are now superheroes. It's incredibly over. This is such a far cry from where it started out. But people love it. They don't care that no one dies or if they do, they can just get resurrected with an infinity stone. They don't care that these cars don't really get damaged. It's all just to turn your brain off and have a good time for two hours. So in essence, what's the point of me even talking about it? Because as soon as I point out the obvious, people get triggered. Hey, you know what? The script is dumb. The dialogue is even worse. They just say family over and over again. There's no stakes to anything. They're like, screw you. You're just a blah, 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 blah. like, was that not true? I'm pretty sure it was true. And I didn't even say it was a negative. I'm just pointing out obvious things that some people might not even think about. Like, oh yeah, that is a really dumb script. Like, oh yeah, I guess I didn't think about it that way. That makes sense. I mean, I still like it, but fair play. That would be the kind of discourse that would be acceptable, but we don't have that. <laughs> we don't have that. Like I said, I am certified on Rotten Tomatoes, but there have been movies that have made me scratch my head thinking, this is binary and I don't really like that. I don't like that things are either a positive or a negative. I typically am somewhere in between on these films. Like Fast and the Furious 10, for instance, I didn't hate the movie, I didn't love the movie. I'd put it somewhere around a C. It was entertaining, it was very stupid, but I got a decent amount out of it. Can I put a C on Rotten Tomatoes? Not really, because at the end, you still have to push it one way or the other. And that's a problem for me. I have a hard time internalizing that. So I say, oh, Fast 10 is a, is a positive, that's a fresh. Well, that's not really what I want from movies going forward. I don't want these larger than life, dumbass action films that really have no stakes or no consequences to them and have scripts that feel like they really were processed by Chad GTP. Plus, I don't want that to be on my tombstone. I don't want someone to use that against me in the future. Oh look, Adam gave Fast 10 a positive and then that same guy's gonna give this one a negative? Screw you. It's at the point where we have so many sequels and prequels and, and things within the same universe that it's so hard to even communicate with a lot of people because they are so in the camp. They can't step back and be like, I see where you're coming from. And I think that that's where film criticism is valuable. Not the Rotten Tomatoes crap, where you can just look at the, the total and be like, oh, this is an 80%, that means it's a good movie. No, that just means 80% of the critics decided this is better than it is worse, but it could have very well been on that line. They might have been having a hard time even deciding at the end, but ultimately we're like, eh. You take into account the viewers that are going to these movies and then it makes it a little easier, I guess. I know there's a good chunk of people now that just avoid the critics score altogether and they go straight for the audience percentage. Oh look, Mario is at 56%, but look at the audience rating, it's at 90 some percent. That's the one I trust, that's the one I want to go with. 
typically it varies depending on what those scores end up being. They'll, they'll pick and choose the ones that fit their narrative better. My takeaway on that is simple. If you're going to the audience score when it comes to these types of sites, you didn't really care about the critic to begin with. You just wanted to hear what you wanted to hear to make yourself feel better. And that's perfectly fine as well. Just understand that it is kind of pointless. So to put a bow on this and come full circle, I would just say when you're reviewing a movie or when you're thinking about talking about a film or looking at other people's reviews or engaging in conversation, some discourse with them, look at it from different angles. Look at it from how is this as a production? Does it meet all the needs of the viewer? How is it personally to you? And can you separate that from what other people might think going in? And thirdly, does it matter what this person has to say? Do I trust their opinion? And so if you're able to do this, then yes, I think there's value to someone like me talking about films. If not though, then I'm irrelevant. I'm pointless. There's tons of franchises out now. We have people that are still die-hard Zack Snyder DCU fans, and they're shitting over everything that comes out from DCU now. They want James Gunn fired, and he hasn't even really started yet. They want him out because they're that loyal to one director's vision. We have another group of people saying, you're racist, you're homophobic, you're a Nazi, you're whatever. Just because you don't like these live action Disney remakes, it has nothing to do with any social commentary. It's just, I look at that stuff and I think, can't you do something different or unique? I, I mean, this is so pathetic from Disney, a company that's got so much money and used to have so much creativity at their disposal to just go back to their well over and over again. It's, it's boring. It's so boring. And then not to leave them out, but we also do have really bad faith critics out there that will praise things ahead of time because they got early access or the so-called critics that are just anti-woke. They call everything woke now. Everything's horrible. Uh, it's all an agenda, blah, 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 blah. There, there's so much noise all over the place. Really, it just comes down to where the heart of the critic is at. Are they in it? Can you tell they love movies and going and and they have passionate conversations with people? And it, gen it genuinely seems like they care about the product and not the conversation around the product months or years ahead of time. There is value in someone like me, maybe not to the neighbor down the street that only goes to one or two movies a year. Uh, they're gonna they're gonna go see the live action whatever regardless. But maybe to the other guy that doesn't come out of his house very often because he's binging the Godfather movies, followed up by everything David Fincher's made, followed by everything Quentin Tarantino's made. This guy, this girl lives and breathes movies. They want to hear from someone like me as well, and that's where that's where we thrive, right? That's where we need to exist so that we can chat with each other about these things. The good, the bad, and the ugly. It's been a minute since I've done a rant. Thank you for joining me on this little adventure. If you had a good time, if you enjoyed what I'm saying, please like the video and think about subscribing. I post tons of movie content every single week. We'd love to have you stick around. If you're a big fan of the channel and you're looking at ways to support it, I have Patreon, patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. There's a $1 tier, a $10 tier. It goes up a ways with different perks. You can also become a member right here on YouTube via that join button. So there's lots of ways to, to show your support. I have a podcast that I've been doing for a couple weeks. It's on Spotify. It's on Apple Podcasts. It's all over. Adam Does Movies. Check it out. And hopefully, I'll see you next time. Take care.